Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar today to learn about how can you use stable cell lines for your drug discovery project. My name is Vivian Zhang. I'm the product manager of cell biology at Genscript. Here is the content of the webinar today. I'll start with a very brief product history introduction, and then I'll guide you through the workflow of how stable cell lines are generated at Genscript. Next, I'll point out some product highlights. Uh, following that, I will introduce to you the portfolio that we have at Genscript, and then I'll close up with a case study. Founded in 2002 and headquartered in New Jersey, USA, Genscript is now a leading company in biotech, providing a variety of products and services in the field of molecular biology, proteins, peptides, antibodies, and cellular analysis. In 2009, we started to provide stable cell lines for GPCR functional assay. Seven years later, in 2016, we extended our portfolio to also provi provide immune checkpoint stable cell lines for binding assays as well as for functional assays. One year later, we further extended our portfolio to also provide the FC receptor stable cell lines for antibody binding. Last year, in 2020, right after the COVID-19 pandemic, we have also developed related cell lines over expressing ACE2 or SARS-CoV-2 spike protein for investigation of the virus binding. So far, we have already 10, more than 10 years of experience in generating stable cell lines for drug discovery, and we have successfully provided more than 200 products covering cult targets in drug discovery. First of all, let me introduce to you the workflow of how we generate stable cell lines at Genscript. We start with constructing the plasmid, including both the target gene as well as the selective gene. The plasmid with the target gene will be selected by the antibiotic selection and only the target expression plasma will be used for transfection. And from here, a cell pool is generated with heterogeneous expression of the target gene. Then we perform the dilution cloning to get a single clone stable cell line. And then each clone is further expanded in cell culture, and the one with the best performance is selected as our product. The product clone is then banked in our inventory further expanded in harvest, and a portion is used for QA before the cell line product becomes deliverables. The first question in recombined stable cell line generation is which whole cell to choose. We offer our cell lines in various of whole cells, including CHO K1, HEK293, HTE1080, and JERKIT. The whole cell of each cell line product is chosen for the best performance of the target gene expression, and we offer as many options as possible. CHOK1 is the most popular whole cell used in recombined cell line for drug discovery. It is an epithelial cell line derived from the ovary of Chinese hemaster. The CHOK1 cell we used at Genscript for stable cell line generation is a DHFR sufficient strain. These cells are easy to culture, they are tightly adherent to the vessel, and uh, cost very low to grow with simple medium. Another option we offer here is HEK293. These cells are derived from human embryonic kidney cells. They are widely used due to their reliable growth as well as the propensity of transfection. These cells are compatible for different platforms, especially human disease target. A feature of these cells is that they are easy to detach, so most, mostly they are grow in suspension cell culture. HT1080 is another option we provide. They are delivered from the human fibrosarcoma biopsy. This cell is a suitable model for NF-kappa-B signaling pathway, which is necessary for immune responses. Therefore, we chose this cell line for generating our immune checkpoint reporter cell lines. 
Jerk it is also our option. This cell is a cell line of human T cells. Therefore, they are the perfect model for in vitro assays to mimic the real immune responses. Talking about the expression of target genes, there are several efforts we have done to ensure the best performance. First of all, there is no tag for the expressed target gene in our stable cell lines. Recent research has found that using the label may cause artifacts in drug discovery results due to the label interference. Therefore, the non-tag technology allows for label-free investigation and higher accuracy. In addition, codon optimization is also performed in our stable cell line, when necessary to increase gene expression level in certain host cell lines. This is due to the nature of different host cell lines it can be challenging for some genes to achieve high expression level in certain host cell lines. Codon optimization can solve this problem without altering the amino acid sequence of the target gene. To select the plasmid with target gene expression, antibiotic selection system was applied. When constructing the plasmid, both the target gene as well as the antibiotic resistant gene was constructed to be driven by the same promoter. A plasmid expressing the target gene can then be selected by the expression of the antibiotics. A variety of antibiotic resistant selectable markers are used in different products, including hygromycin B resistant gene, pyromycin resistant gene, zeolcine resistant gene, as well as geneticine resistant gene. A two-step screening method is applied for choosing the product clone agent script. The first step is a single clone screening. As you can see in the diagram below, due to the different transduction level and the gene insertion site in the chromosomes, the transduced cells generated from the target gene expression plasmid are actually polyclonal and presented as a heterogeneous mixture. Different cell clones as shown in the yellow and green, they have different expansion rate. Therefore, in a cell pool after a few passages, you'll start to see the expression level of the target gene start to shift due to the outgrowth of one clone versus another clone. Only when you have a single clone stable cell line, you can have the expression level stable after passages. Dilution cloning technology is applied to generate single clone. In this procedure, the polyclonal cell pool after transduction is diluted to a certain concentration before plating to a 96 well plate, so each well contains no more than one cell. From there, a single clone cell line will be obtained in individual well after several days of expansion. And then, all the single clones are further screened to choose the product clone based on the performance. Highly producing clones are actually rare due to the reason that active regions supporting high gene expression in the chromosome is actually rare. And also, in the case of immune checkpoint stable cell lines, some immune checkpoint proteins can actually induce apoptosis. Therefore, it is very necessary to screen for the clone with the best performance as a product clone. The screening method we use includes both the fax assays to check the expression as well as functional assays. So, when do you need to use the stable cell lines? To answer this question, we need to take a look into the procedure of drug discovery as shown in the diagram here. As you can see, it is a very long procedure involving many steps. The whole procedure can be broken down into three major stages. Show in the blue is the drug discovery stage, including target discovery, validation, assay development, screening for hits, leads identification, and optimization. After that is the drug development stage, which also includes filing of the investigational new drug application, or called IND. 
After that, if you get good results from the clinical trial, you can then move on to new drug application as well as the drug commercialization. Into the, in the drug discovery stage, show in the blue, after a target for a certain disease is validated and the related assays are developed, you start to screen a whole list of drug candidates to identify a few ones with good binding affinity, which are called HITs. For this procedure, overexpressing cell lines are needed. Then the identified kit hits will be carried over to the next step for lead identification, which are the one or a couple drug candidates that can actually active or inhibit the drug target. And this is where the reporter cell lines come into place. The next question is, why do you choose stable cell lines from GenScript for your drug discovery project? Our stable cell line products are great cellular tools for drug discovery and are advanced compared to other products by the three key features here. They're stable in passages. They provide high signal versus background ratio and also they're ready to use. First of all, I want to talk about the stability. When you use cell lines in your drug discovery project, I encourage you to think about your data reproducibility. This can only be guaranteed by highly stable cell line. Therefore, all of our stable cell lines are tested for their stability for more than 15 passages. Here I'm showing you two example data. In the left, it's a stability test of the CHOKE-1 MT1 GALF-15 cell line. The intracellular calcium mobilization was tested in this cell line for more than 15 passages. On the right side is a stability test of the HT1080 OX40 reporter cell line. In this cell line, the OX40 ligand was added to the cell culture and the expression secretion of the L8 was detected in the cell pregnant. The secretion of the reporter IL-8 was detected for 20 passages and still shown to be stable. The next critical feature you need to consider when choose stable cell line for drug discovery is how good is the signal versus background ratio. In order to get significant and interpretable data, it is obvious that you need your cellular analysis tool to deliver high signal and background noise as low as possible. One way to examine the S versus B ratio is to compare the signal from the particular cell line of interest to its control cell line. As you can see in the example I present to you here, flow cytometry analysis of the target gene PD-1 expression in the PD-1 stable cell line compared to its control from either gene script or the competitor. In the left panel, you can see the expression level of the PD-1 as shown in the blue is significantly higher than in its control cell, which is just a choke one. However, on the, in the right panel, you can see the signal from the uh, target expression cell line is actually overlapping in the histogram compared to its control cell line, indicating the cell line is probably not a single clone and it's not delivering the high signal back versus background ratio. This could be a very serious issue when you use a cell line for your drug discovery research. The next product feature we offer from our stable cell line, which will be very valuable to you, is that they are ready to use. As you may know, cell line generation is a very time-consuming work, but drug discovery is very competitive, especially time-wise. As you can see in the timeline of the cell line development in the diagram here, I'm showing you the number of weeks for each step. In week one, you need to do your analysis and the verification of the DNA. 
After that, takes about a couple weeks for the construction of the vectors. Starting in week five, which is your second month, you can do transfection and selection of the initial stable producing pools. And then it will be another couple weeks for dilution cloning. Only starting in the third month, which is week nine to week 12, you can do expansion. After that, you still need to do evaluation and choose the top clones. To get the result, you still need to do some QA and also harvest your cells, which takes another couple of weeks. And after that, you can get to the final deliverables. The whole procedure takes about 20 weeks, which is five months of your valuable time. So why do you waste your time? Speed up your drug discovery by taking advantage of the ready-to-use cell line products. Next, I want to spend a few minutes to briefly get you through the stable cell line products at GenScript, which covers more than 200 hot targets for drug discovery. Immune checkpoints are regulators of the immune system, which prevents the immune system from attacking cells indiscriminately. However, some cancers can protect themselves from attack by taking advantage of this mechanism. Therefore, the cancer immune therapy has been developed to artificially stimulate the immune system to treat cancer. For example, as you can see in the diagram on the right side, T cells expresses two types of immune checkpoints, activating receptors or inhibitory receptors. Agnist or blocking antibodies can be developed respectively to activate T cell immune response. At GenScript, we offer 50 different types of overexpressing cell lines for binding assays. All of the cell lines has been validated for the high expression of the target gene by FAXA assay as you can see in the data here. We also offer seven different types of reporter cell lines for functional assays by taking advantage of the endogenous expression uh, and the secretion of different types of uh, interleukin uh, from the whole cell. For example, IL-8 or IL-2. Next, I want to talk to you about the FC receptor stable cell lines. FC receptors are membrane proteins that are expressed on immune infector cells and bind antibodies to help in regulating immune responses. When antibodies are attached to disease-causing pathogens or infected cells, the FC receptors can immediate their destruction by triggering antibody-dependent cytotoxicity, or ADCC. A variety of FC receptors shows distinct expression patterns on different types of immune effector cells and selectively bind the FC region of specific antibodies. FC receptor affinity analysis of antibody drugs provides information on which type of immune cells are involved in the immune responses triggered by the drug candidate. At GenScript, we provide stable cell lines expressing eight different types of FC gamma receptors, including hypermorphic versions. They are indispensable tools for cellular analysis of antibody binding, affinity analysis, and half-time tests. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, we have reacted quickly to develop stable cell lines for research on SARS-CoV-2. Cell entry of coronavirus depends on the spike protein binding to a cellular receptor and priming by a cellular protease. Recent studies have demonstrated that the ACE2 protein serves as a cell surface receptor to bind S protein in SARS-CoV-2 and facilitate their cell cellular entry. The ACE2 has therefore been proposed as a potential therapeutic target for COVID-19. At GenScript, we have developed stable cell lines with high expression of human ACE2 or SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, each with two options of whole cells, HEK293 or CHOK1. The spike, the spike protein stable cell lines expresses the full length of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, including the S1 and S2 domains. Both of them have been validated for cell surface expression of spike protein by binding with ACE2 protein using FAX assay. 
They are great tools for binding assays of spike protein, or they can also be used as immunogens. The ACE2 cell lines products has been validated for cell surface ACE2 expression by binding with spike protein RBD using fax assay analysis as shown in the histogram here. These cell lines can be used for multiple assays in, in researching the virus. For example, binding assays or affinity analysis of ACE2 antibody, neutralization uh, assays to screen antibodies or other molecules that can block pseudovirus or live virus infection, or it can be used in in vitro cell models for investigating SARS-CoV-2 infection mechanism. Last but not least, I also want to talk to you about the GPCR stable cell lines. G protein coupled receptors is a very large group of cell surface receptors that can detect molecules outside of the cells and activate cellular responses. GPCRs are involved in many types of diseases, including mental, metabolic, immunological, cardiovascular, inflammatory, sense disorders, as well as cancers. They are very important drug target. Actually, 34% of all FDA-approved drugs target 108 members of this family. At Genscript, we provide a very wide portfolio, including more than 150 stable cell lines with target GPCR overexpression. These stable cell lines cover one, uh, more than 75% of all potential drug clinical targets. These cell lines can be used for functional assays in GPCR drug lead identification. All of them have been fully validated in multiple assay platforms, including calcium flex assays, CAMP assays, or chemi illuminescent assays. By now, you see why the stable cell lines from Genscript can serve as great cellular analysis tools in your drug discovery project. We have 11 years of experience in generating stable cell lines for drug discovery. We have successfully developed more than 200 stable cell lines expressing various hot drug targets. All of stable cell lines are single clone. They are validated for high expression or functionality. They are stable for passages and present high signal versus background ratio, and also they are ready to use. These cell lines can speed up your project and enable highly reproducible data. You can find more information of the stable cell line products by visiting our website and go to the catalog product sections. If you have any question regarding the product, just go to the document tabs and open the FAQs. Make sure you click on the catalog product section and you will be able to find your question there. Thank you all for joining the webinar today. I hope our products serve you well in your drug discovery research, and please don't hesitate to contact Genscript if you have any questions.